You are listening to Anna Letitia Cook at Women Up Radio. Good morning and welcome to Women Up Radio. Today's guest is Sarah Dananth. Sarah is an Olympic medalist and double world champion. She's in charge of the sports department of the NGO for Peace, Freedom Butterflies, on the board of the association Premier de Corde, which changes the way that people look at disabilities and changes the daily life of hospitalized children, which I think is amazing. She's also product manager in a consulting firm and a speaker for startups and large groups, and she's creating an online school for young women in the digital industry. So welcome back to the show, Sarah. Hello, Anna. Thank you for, for having me today. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. Um, it's fascinating. You do so much work. I can't believe how much work you've done. I would, do, I would like to, do, to be able to do more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we are only human. There's a limit. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about sports disciplines for business, women in tech, startups, and also being a speaker and charities and how that can really help. So I know the last time you were on the show, which was three years ago or something like that, we spoke about that type of thing and also about changing from sports disciplines and to different careers, so radical career changes. Can you give us an update? What's been happening over the last few years with women in sport and changing careers from top athlete to business? Is it viewed differently now? Are companies appreciative of the skills and the mindset? Does it help being a top athlete or is it negative? <laughs> um, I recognize that uh, in last years uh, there has been um, some ch a change in France. Uh, I think it starts uh, first because um, with, um, it starts with the athletes uh, speaking out. Uh, we express ourselves, we take position, we defend our values. I mean, not in France, but around the world. Yeah. Uh, already there, um, the people who themselves uh, constitute companies see us, uh, hear us, and uh, no longer have uh, this, um, this thing that uh, he's, an, he's or she is an athlete, just a body with uh, uh, no brain, I think is the right <laughs> word. <laughs> well, there are, there are still, uh, you know, there are companies uh, that still uh, use us for communication uh, we can't do anything about it. Uh, it's just like uh, um, the greenwashing. Um, however, it still allows uh, athletes to be supported, uh, especially financially, by uh, this kind of company. Uh, women in sport uh, are more visible, uh, but as in many sectors also, um, I said uh, more uh, visible, not enough, but more. Yes. <laughs> um, I see. I see it in the tech industry. Uh, uh, we um, we take the floor. That's uh, basically uh, what that what has changed. Uh, we speak up. Uh, we are um, getting um, heard, yeah. uh, respected more, and supported also, um, not only uh, by women. And yeah. we make um, um, uh, the, the short scale. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so um, both uh, at the same time make um, um, make the career uh, of a top athlete more visible. Yeah. Um, her um, post career so is more accessible. Yes. But it's like. Um, uh, everything else, uh, it takes time, uh, yes. of course, and we are far from, I mean, it's not over. Yeah. Um, companies consider athletes more, and athletes are taking more space, uh, more space in media and yeah. even power for some. Yes. And the mindset for that uh, has, has changed. Uh, yeah. We are no longer just uh, a means of communication. And many companies uh, call upon athletes uh, to share their lives, but now um, they call upon um, uh, uh, 
um, lesser known uh, athletes. Yep. That's right. Lesser yes. known athletes uh, with uh, a typical background, and uh, that's uh, then the usual um, ones who have um, been around for years. And yep. yes, we can see today that uh, the atmosphere is healthier. And yep. yes, when we are, you are a, a top athlete. Uh, I mean, athlete in the top of uh, your, uh, your your sport. Yep. Yes, it's easier and because you are more visible and yes, you are able also to to change some things around you. Yeah, yeah. And is it a comfortable transition? So for you as an athlete, when you were first changing to business, is it something that makes you very worried, very nervous, or are athletes now more confident about making that transition? Um, I'm 41, and uh, when I wanted to, to make my transition, um, that was uh, a period that uh, in France, we, I don't know why, but we still haven't think about it. I don't know if, uh, yep. okay. And uh, because of that, uh, yes, I, I was worried about that, uh, especially that I wanted to, to, to work in the tech industry, startup, data, uh, AI. And for me, that was inaccessible, uh, especially yep. after sports. And we, during all my life, during 20 years, uh, my coach, my uh, sport ministry, um, Every, everybody around me uh, learned me to how to be the best, uh, yeah. the best sport woman, uh, how to be, how to win. But yes. they haven't um, learned me uh, how to be prepared for, for the rest of my life because yes. uh, that's sports. <laughs> I will yeah. not do, do practice sport all my life. That's impossible. How to be a, a better person for my communities or, and yes, at this period, that was really hard. And, um, and uh, the, the network, the network helped me. I had yes. uh, no network, but I created one. Yes. And I used Twitter, in fact. I used Twitter to share my, my point of view yeah. about, this, about this, um, this subject, for example. And uh, today, that's absolutely different because, um, as I said, athletes take position. Yeah. Uh, athletes uh, use um, so social media yes. and uh, they are more visible just because of that. So yeah. now, um, before the end of your career, your sport career, um, companies already uh, chase you. you yes, know? Yep. they're so, looking for you. Yep. Yeah, the, um, uh, it's absolutely the contrary of... Uh, that's at, that's yeah. brilliant. So that, that's better. <laughs> well, sure. okay, brilliant. Okay, maybe brilliant is too enthusiastic. That's definitely, yeah, it's, okay, it's, it's going in the right direction. The right direction. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I will calm down. <laughs> so, but, but you've done really well with that because you're now a product manager in a consulting firm and you're a speaker for startups and large groups. So what are the challenges? Because moving, already moving from being an athlete into business and then moving to being a product manager in a consulting firm, that's a challenge for anybody. You know, even someone who's always been in tech, always been in, in business, it's still a big step. So can you see any similarities between consulting and creating a startup? And what challenges do you see on this product manager aspect of careers? Um, product manager is a very uh, exciting job. It's a job that is um, uh, <clears throat> evolving in the tech and startup industry uh, mainly, but uh, is opening up to um, uh, big, uh, large, large companies. Yeah. Uh, 
This profession is uh, new and has been arriving uh, in Europe for a few years. Yeah. Uh, this job is really rich. I really love this job because uh, we are in contact with the um, the final co uh, consumer uh, who yeah. uses the product or the, the the service, and we try to satisfy uh, uh, the best uh, we can um, to satisfy him or her yeah. uh, as best we can. But this way, uh, while trying uh, to um, to to succeed or to meet the business challenges of the company. Yep. Uh, so we are also in, uh, in contact with all the stakeholders uh, around this product or companies. This job uh, allows us to, to create um, products and services that are adapted uh, if we listen uh, to our users. Mm -hmm. And being a young profession, uh, there is a lot of uh, room to be filled uh, and uh, this profession is starting to be uh, uh, in tension in France as, uh, as well as in the United States. Yep. But there are places to be, to be taken uh, for women, for men, whatever. Um, and um, you, you can, today you can quickly switch uh, to this profession. And on the other hand, you will have to call upon your network or create one. Mm -hmm. um, Without training, you can get there according to your profile and your experience. In concrete, concrete terms, uh, you, need to, you need a, a network or to create one, as I said, um, a bit of audacity, I, I, I think, uh, to read <laughs> and soak up a lot uh, about uh, uh, product uh, literature. Uh, that's yeah. really important uh, almost every day. Yeah. Uh, to discuss with people uh, whose job it is, and uh, LinkedIn uh, is useful for that. Yeah. Um, I have never uh, created a startup, but I work on product and services uh, sometimes that we create from scratch. And sorry, and uh, when we uh, go to the customer, um, we we get there as uh, if the product uh, was about to be released. Yep. Uh, personally, I start from from scratch to understand uh, what has been uh, produced, why, how, uh, where we are today, where uh, what is the vision for tomorrow, etc. So I think it's pretty similar because you have an idea, yes. uh, you have a vision, uh, a roadmap, a problem to solve, uh, a problem to be solved. Yes. Um, users and user research, so prioritization, testing, implementation, and iterations, uh, feedback, iterative improvement, and bug management. So yeah, that's, in fact, really similar. Yes, yeah. I have to say, I've started three businesses now. Um, and the, I mean, the first one I started, uh, oh, my God, in 1991, long time ago. <laughs> um, and because I work a lot with, people in consulting companies. My clients are, are there are a lot of um, different ranges, but quite a few of them are consultants. And so during our sessions, they're telling me about what they're doing and how they have to look at things and what they need to take into account. And I can really relate to what they're saying from when I started my businesses mm. and the things that I had to think of and consider and be wary of. So it always seems to me that consultants are perfect if they want to then go and do their own startup. <laughs> I'm not saying you're all perfect always, <laughs> but you're in a very good position because you have to analyze all those aspects all the time. So I get the impression that it gives you a very creative mind mm. and also a very good um, broad analytical skills because you can mm. see all the different impacts and this coming back to sport and your level of sport I think I can see a, a line that goes between those because when you're in sport you've got to look at your competitor see their weaknesses, see their strengths, yeah. see what might come 
from an unexpected position. So I think they go really well together. And so for athletes moving out into business, um, I think something like what you're doing, you, there's a lot of your skills you've already developed far more than most people yes. in business right from when you started <laughs> so this is why you're such a success so <laughs> <laughs> maybe I <don't> know. <laughs> so I know you do lo- a lot of speaking how has your speaking career evolved um because you obviously enjoy it and people obviously appreciate your speaking when you're doing an event So how has it evolved and what advice would you give to someone if they want to become a speaker? Um, uh, I took uh, took a break for the the last years uh, for personal reasons. Um, I needed to to find myself. um, But before that, I I worked with uh, Facebook Corp. Um, BMW, LVMH, uh, the Public Investment Bank, yeah. and some startups. The only thing, in fact, I did to be in contact and visible uh, to those to these to these brands uh, was to to give my opinion on subject uh, yeah. they needed uh, via so- social networks, social yeah. media, yeah. Uh, or in interviews. Um, this uh, legitimacy uh, was confirmed uh, by my experience in sports. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's not only words, uh, but also uh, my uh, sports professional, uh, my professional sports career. Uh, yeah. my sport yes, profession- yes. <laughs> Your professional sports <laughs> career. Yes. Professional <laughs> sports career. Uh, at the beginning, um, I, I, I read. Uh, and watch uh, a lot of uh, videos about uh, yeah. the speakers I liked, yeah. about the speakers uh, who uh, were um, uh, made conference about the subject uh, I wanted to share. Yes. Um, and uh, with the, this video, I, and I wanted to, to understand how to structure, structure my, my text yeah. Uh, the do's and don'ts. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't really uh, uh, took uh, some classes uh, for yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but if I have uh, an advice, uh, because that's something I would like uh, to, to to do, but uh, for now I have no time and not the money. <laughs> so I would have taken some uh, acting classes, uh, yes. especially for the body language. Yeah, uh, the voice placement uh, also, and uh, being more comfortable on stage, um, and uh, probably some training on on writing scripts. Uh, yeah, I would like to. So I think that's maybe uh, the, the the advice is uh, yeah. I would give. Yeah, but it's very reassuring that you've been doing speaking without real training to do it you've learned it yourself you've done the research yourself because I know quite a few people are interested in doing something like that but they feel that because they haven't trained specifically in speaking and how and what they never try because they think you must have a training so I think it's very reassuring that you've done it basically yourself I think that's but excellent. In fact, in fact that's uh, like everything in, in life. You, you, <laughs> I will not take the, the example to be uh, the, the president of France. Of course, that's a job, <laughs> why not so bad. But if you have a big challenge, <laughs> if you have a big <laughs> challenge, we also think that we are not able to, to, yes. to, to go and succeed to... to 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 have this challenge to succeed uh, this challenge uh, yeah. that. uh, because that's really big that's uh, enormous that's too much but in fact um, if you don't try if you don't make the first steps you will never know if you are able or if you are not able so um, of course my first conference I was a little bit stressed but um, okay. Uh, uh, 
uh, I knew uh, more about that uh, because of my sports career. Yes. So, okay, I, I talked to myself and do uh, things uh, uh, I, I was used to. And, uh, of course, my first big stage, I was a little bit like this <laughs> because <laughs> on this stage I was with uh, minis- ministers. Um, yeah. Ministers uh, with uh, big... Uh, personalities VIPs I mean, and celebrities VIPs. yeah and I would say mm, are you sure you want me just me Sarah to come here so yes at the moment I, I really called the, the the team to be sure that, that wasn't any wrong they said no yes that's of course you have a different vision you are you it's not political it's not social you are someone and you have something to say okay yeah. uh Take your chance. Don't yes. be. Don't uh, forget to. Um, don't lose yourself because of the stress. Yes. Take uh, the first step and yeah. take your chance. Yeah. Yeah. That's what brilliant. what could happen? In fact. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and of course, yeah. and if it's it's really bad, uh, one day you, you will maybe not think about it. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you just you'll hide. <laughs> So, no, that's excellent. And so tell me more. I know you've cre- or you're creating a school for young women in the digital industry. So tell me more about this and what it's going to do to help young women progress. Uh, I'm, I haven't uh, created. Uh, no, I'm you're... writing this. Yeah, I'm writing this project um, right now. But in fact, there are two schools. Uh, one uh, on the switch and legacy, uh, yeah. because uh, that's something really important for me. And when I, I left uh, Guadeloupe for Bordeaux, uh, I would like uh, some experienced people uh, would uh, help me or um, advise uh, advise me for some to to avoid some mistakes or just to have. Um, to have a uh, less stressed life at this moment. Yeah. yeah. I was, uh, I was uh, far, I was, okay, Bordeaux is 8,000 uh, kilometers from uh, my island. And that was, really hard to, <laughs> yeah. that was really hard to, to, to leave your family. So yes, yes yeah. um, a school about uh, switch and legacy, which yeah. would uh, in fact allow uh, those who have succeeded um, to share with young people um, their journey, uh, yes. the why, the how, and yeah. give a uh, helping hand. Give them support, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, by succeed, uh, success, I mean uh, a real success, uh, not yeah. uh, people we always see uh, on TV that's, that mean nothing for me. Yeah. Just, okay. Yes. And the other project is about uh, tech school. Um, yeah. I, I, I believe that uh, our family, uh, our local life, our school environment um, plays on um, on us on how to be. Yes. On our daily life and sometimes on our future. Yeah. Uh, I said I believe that uh, in fact, uh, w- which is true, but uh, in fact, uh, studies uh, show that's true. Uh, yes. That mean, what I mean. Um, um, not all young people um, have a network. Not yeah. everyone uh, knows a sex- successful tech person. Yeah. Not all of them uh, have this vision of what uh, uh, tech can bring to the world and to their life um, yeah. at first. Uh, I, believe in, uh, I believe in tech, uh, yeah. seriously. <laughs> and, yes. uh, it's benefit for our world and yeah. uh, on for our lives and for our planets too. Yeah, uh, I believe in human beings uh, also, but um, and I believe a, a lot in representation. Yeah. Um, to go and see young people from Guadeloupe, for example, uh, tell them you can success uh, even if you live at eight thousand kilometers from Paris. Yeah. Uh, tell them to to trust uh, uh, to trust that and it will work uh, yeah. well. Tell them that um, I don't know. I would teach you code or 
to develop a product with no code. Uh, yes. And you will be able also to work to 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 create your your work in fact yeah. uh, from home uh, without moving far from uh, your family uh, yeah. in Paris, for that example. Would be and even yeah. Yeah, and even be able to work with a Japanese uh, at uh, Japanese guy at uh, the opposite of the world, yeah. uh, the other side uh, of the planet. Yeah. Um, that, that would be amazing. That, that, I think that will be, this, this yeah. is important. And above all, tell them, uh, because that uh, I leave that. Yes. Uh, yes, it's true. The media, especially uh, uh, the television, doesn't play its role, its role in society. And so you feel lost. Yes. You feel lost because the people on TV, the people who are succeed, who are successful, yeah. uh, don't look like you. And yeah. so, yes, um, uh, to yourself, maybe you can say to yourself, I don't exist. Yes. Uh, people like me uh, can succeed. Yeah. Uh, which is not true. <laughs> Absolutely not true. I know that uh, it impacts uh, you, but... It's just not true. Uh, yes. This is this is a, a a part of my life, and if the media uh, don't uh, be good, don't do, don't play uh, their their role, their yep. social role. Yes. Um, uh, as they're supposed to 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 do. So come with us. Come yep. on, we will we will help you, and yep. and then. You can help someone else. So. I think that's brilliant. But and when do you think you'll be able to put that in place? I know you've started the work on it. Do you think it's something? Will it take a year, two years, three years? How long do you think to get it set up? Uh, I I will start for the. Um, 2022 for sure yeah um this is not the the first project uh, yes because some uh, month ago um i was uh, on all my projects in the same time yes. and finally <laughs> i decided to prioritize yes because of the time because of everything so yeah. um i knew that will not be uh be, be, before uh this summer or maybe yes. se september i don't know but yeah. uh so next year yep. yeah that's brilliant and i know you also you do a lot of work for charities so for freedom butterflies and premier de corde so what are these charities doing um what help are they giving and what are their aims and how can people help you by supporting them um in fact, um, to to explain, uh, Premier de um, de Corde is an uh, association that changes uh, the daily of the daily life of um, hospitalized uh, children yeah. by uh, bringing um, um, their idols. Yes. Yeah, their idols uh, to help them. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, Kylian uh, Mbappé uh, uh, in French. He's uh, uh, the parent. Uh, the Godfather. Okay, the Godfather of ah yes, like like the movie. Yeah. Like yeah, the exactly. Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> the Godfather of uh, the uh, association. Yeah. Um, he comes uh, sometimes to the hospitals uh, and spends uh, a moment with uh, these children and. Yeah and practice sports uh, with them after. Yeah. Uh, the association also try to, to change uh, the way people look at the disability uh, yeah. um, in companies and, uh, and schools. Yeah. And uh, the other um, association is a, a, a non-governmental organization, yeah. uh, Freedom Butterflies. Um, I co-created uh, um, this NGO um, with uh, a the principal theme is uh, about peace uh, yeah. for young Caribbean uh, people. Yeah. Uh, we have several uh, calls, directions. Yeah. Yes. Calls. Okay. Um, I'd say several uh, directions. Okay. Uh, nature, 
uh, and the planet of yeah. uh, um, art, uh, yeah. I don't know, drawing, uh, paint, uh, music and sport. Yeah. I represent the sport direction. Uh, we have another sportswoman, athlete. And every month, uh, starting in the end of uh, January, uh, uh, the next month, so, uh, we will bring an athlete um, to some clubs uh, and schools uh, to talk about um, um, his or her career, uh, to uh, uh, exchange uh, with the children and practice yeah. his or her sport uh, yeah. with them. Um, I have already done that, um, done this in few uh, few times, and yes. it really makes um, the children dream. Yes, uh, it whatever, inspires them. Yes, whatever their age. Uh, yes, it makes them feel good and uh, uh, inspire them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The the first time I knew, <laughs> the first time I knew I was going to 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 be an Olymp- an Olympic medalist was the day. Um, uh, I saw um, on television uh, a person like me who looked like me, who yeah. came from Guadeloupe and yeah. who I knew, in fact, uh, become the first uh, Olympic champion in Epe, uh, a bourge- bourgeois, it's also yes. English, a bourgeois sport and uh, at this period a little bit racist. Yeah. Um, I was 16 years old, um, yeah. but... I was sure of myself. Um, yeah. So you you can help us. Uh, I mean, your local environment is important, and yeah. we all can change this kind of things. Yes. Uh, to help to 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 answer the question about help us, um, you can be a volu- volunteer. A volunteer. You volunteer work. You can do volunteer work. I have my English lesson also to do, to <laughs> this, this morning. That's good. Or you can um, um, uh, share our um, posts on social media. Yeah. Uh, if you are a doctor, maybe you can uh, help us, uh, uh, especially if you, are, if you are specialized for certain disease. Uh, that's uh, really good for us and uh, that's it uh, that's brilliant we have, yeah. uh, of course you can donate <laughs> yeah <laughs> like every association yes. you, you, yeah. you, you can donate and uh, you have all the info uh, yeah. on the the website yeah you'll you'll have to send me the links to all yes, of those I will. and I'll I will. put them on the the page okay. when the interview goes live okay can I ask do you have any one final piece of wisdom or strategy that you think we should keep in mind that's going to help us going forward? Um, we are all in uh, extreme uh, difficulty. Uh, human uh, human uh, relationships uh, are changing. Um, the relation to ourselves also uh, changed. COVID, uh, uh, the COVID uh, uh, in French, uh, de- devastates. Dev- devastates. Devastates. Dev- devastates, okay. Or devastate, uh, de- devastate, devastate, or dem- demonstrate? No, devastates. Devastate, okay. devastates, right. Uh, COVID, the COVID devastates, but also make us uh, react, I think. Yeah. So if you want to change uh, a part of your life, uh, you have to take the necessary steps. Uh, yeah. Personally, each time uh, uh, it took me time to because uh, I'm a person who uh, really, really takes uh, the time uh, yeah. to think about the life after. Uh, while uh, others say um, that it is uh, right away. Uh, yeah. If this is uh, your case, you are not longer you go at your own pace, in fact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So first, don't compare yourself to, to the others. Uh, to yeah. others. Um, set a goal to yourself. Uh, be honest with yourself. Um, look at where you are today and uh, look at the gap um, uh, before you reach the goal. 
yeah. be honest with you again. <laughs> uh, I think uh, uh, think about um, um, uh, what you need to do to reach uh, that goal. Training, uh, I don't know, uh, eating well. Yes. Uh, again, be honest with you and take a step. Yeah. See how you feel yeah. one step at a time. Yes. Um, if... Um, if at each step you don't get uh, the result you want, uh, don't change. Don't change the goal. That's uh, the, the real big mistake I see uh, most of the time. But don't change uh, the goal. Uh, just make it right, and of course, be be honest with you again. Yes. Uh, yeah. Congratulate yourself uh, uh, on each step you take. Yeah. And. Um, Unsuccessful and un- unsuccessful <laughs> steps yeah. are also positive uh, yeah. in the end because um, uh, they allow you to learn more about yourself. And so don't uh, throw everything away uh, uh, yeah. when you don't have what you really want. That's so true. I hope that was clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's so true, particularly about doing just one step and congratulating yourself and being yeah. honest with yourself. Even if you don't do something for whatever reason, as long as you know why and you tell yourself the truth about why, you can that's accept it, you can learn from it. It's being, I think, being honest with ourselves. We don't need to tell anybody else, but as long as we tell ourselves the truth, that's what is important. I love that. I really love your your strategies there. Very, very helpful. Mm-hmm. Sarah, thank you so much for coming back on the show. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you again. And it was a pleasure for me. So, hopefully we can too. speak again soon. And um, mm-hmm. maybe I can ask you, um, maybe we can do a special show going much more into your charities and what they do and how they help because I think they're very interesting and they do so much for giving people the courage to know they can do things and they don't have to stay hidden away and it's just finding that strength anyway I'm I'm getting <laughs> distracted sorry thank you very much it's been thank a you, real Anna. pleasure thank you. it was a it, pleasure for me, for me too. thank you Everybody, you've been listening to Sarah Dunant uh, on Women Up Radio. I hope to speak to you all again or see you all again next week. Take care and have a lovely week. Bye-bye. Bye.